All right, so today I just wanted to take a few minutes and go over a rational function, specifically focusing on the end behavior, because that was kind of the new thing in class. Now, we're going to go through all four steps that we need to to completely graph the uh, rational function. Now, I understand that some of this you may feel is a little bit excessive, and in some cases it is. In fact, a lot of the things that we're going to do, we, we're probably going to say, oh, but I already knew that. Yes, you probably did, but we want to know how we can prove it or how we can show it because at different times we may need that and especially when we get to limits and we get to calculus later on, it's going to be important to be able to understand how in behavior works, what it means when we're approaching infinity, you know, that kind of thing that maybe is a little bit different. So we're kind of getting introduced to the idea now and then we'll use them later. So let's go ahead and work with this one right here. So I've got x minus 4 over 3 minus 2x. Now the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to find the asymptotes. So I need to find both the horizontal and the vertical asymptotes. As we're going, I'm going to go ahead and just graph it over here on the side, just little by little, so that we can kind of put things together and make sure that everything's making sense. If you want to do all the math first and then put it on the graph last, that's fine too. But I like to just kind of do it all at once because then I can see if I've made a mistake. So first, let's go for the vertical asymptote. That's the one that's going up and down because it's vertical. And so to get the vertical, vertical asymptote, we need to find the place where x is undefined. Now, well, I guess y is undefined. So that's the place where the bottom of our fraction is going to equal 0. So we're going to go 3 minus 2x equals 0. We'll subtract 3 from both sides. We'll go negative 2x equals negative 3. Divide by negative 2 on both sides. And we got x equals 3 over 2. So that's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to draw our horizontal asymptote, which is right at 3 over 2. So there we go. That's 1 and a half for those that are not very good at fractions. So 3 over 2. Now we can go on to the horizontal asymptote. Now the horizontal asymptote, I'm okay right here if you use your rule of thumb, as long as for the end behavior, you actually use the calculations. So for horizontal uh, asymptote, what we're going to do is take the leading coefficient from each of these. I have no idea why that just popped up. So we're just going to take the leading coefficient from each of these, and we're going to say uh, x is on the top, and negative 2x is on the bottom. So that's the leading coefficient, the coefficient with, or sorry, the, the coefficient of the variable with the highest power. I'm just writing down the x's to make sure that they both have the same power. If they don't, you need to add in one that has a 0 as a coefficient. But here, we've got x over x. Those cancel out. Of course, that was a 1x, leaving me with negative 1 half. Now, since that's negative 1 half, I can come over here and now draw my horizontal asymptote at negative 1 half. All right, so y equals negative 1 half, and then this one was x equals 3 halves. All right, so we've got that part done. Let's move on to the next part. Let's talk about the end behavior. All right, so 2 end behavior. Now, what that really means is what is happening as we get closer and closer to those asymptotes. As we get to the end of our graph, and as we get to the tips of those vertical asymptotes, what exactly is happening? So let's do what I think is probably the easier one first. Let's see what's happening as we get out, way, way out on the horizontal asymptote. So let's start with the negative infinity, just for the heck of it. It doesn't matter which one you start with. You're going to do them all anyway. So let's go x approaches negative infinity. So we're saying as x goes this way, farther and farther to the left, what is it approaching? Okay, so to do that, really what you should do is you should plug in a number and then plug in a number that's closer to negative infinity and then plug in another number that's even closer to negative infinity. But to be honest, I don't really see the point in doing all of that if we can just put in one number and get the general idea. So let's go ahead and just put in negative 1,000 for x. So we're going to go negative 1,000 because that's getting close to negative infinity, kind of. Actually, it's nowhere close to negative infinity, but it's a lot closer than these numbers are, 1, 2, 3, 4. So let's go ahead and go 3 minus 2 times negative infinity. And then we say, okay, that would be negative 1,004 over 3 minus 2,000 would be negative 1997. So negative by negative, uh, yep, negative by negative will be 
positive, um, which actually doesn't make any sense at all because a negative times a negative is positive. Sorry about that. Let's just fix that. So that will be 2003. All right, so I've got a negative divided by a positive, and so that will be a negative answer. Now, I know that this is getting pretty close to one half, right? I can see 1,000 divided by 2,000, but it is, is it a little bit more or a little bit less? Well, 2,000, uh, maybe I'll look at the 1,004. If I double 1,004, that would be 2,008. So 1,004 divided by 2,008 would be one half. So since this is a little bit less, it means that I'm dividing by a smaller number. Therefore, my result will be a little bit more than one half. Now, of course, I'm dealing with negatives. And since I'm dealing with negatives, a little bit larger negative number is going to be on the bottom. So that means that y is going to approach negative one half from the bottom. And so we're going to go ahead and draw that piece in. Okay. Now let's go ahead and do x as x approaches positive infinity. So we'll go put in 1,000. You can put in 10,000. You can put in 100. You can put in whatever you want. But obviously, the bigger number you put in, the better estimation you're going to get. So, But you want to keep it easy to work with. I'm not using a calculator here. So we want to be able to make sure that this is something that we can actually do by hand. So 996. And 3 minus 2,000, now here's my negative 1997. Sorry, I was thinking ahead. So here, we now need to figure out, is this a little bit more than 1 half, a little bit less than 1 half? Well, if this were, let's say, uh, 1997, what is half of 1997? Well, if I half the 19, that would be 9. If I half, then I have got another 19, so that's 9, and then 17 which is eight and a half. So if it were 998.5 over 1997, that would be exactly one half. So this is a little bit lower, which means it's a little less than one half. But since it's negatives, that actually means it's going to be from the top. And so we're going to say y approaches negative one half from the top. Because it's not quite negative 0.5. It's a little bit less, negative 0.9, which means it's actually a little bit closer to zero. So this is approaching from the top. OK, wonderful. Now let's look at the horizontal asymptote, or sorry, the vertical asymptote. We just did the horizontal. So we want to now be approaching 3 over 2. Now, you can put in really whatever you want, right? I'm going to go ahead and simplify this even further by saying I'm going to approach 3 halves. Now I'm going to do it first from the left. So I'm going to do a number that's just a little bit less than 3 halves. Now, again, if you put in a really big, uh, something really, really close to negative 3 halves, you're going to get something a little bit closer to negative infinity. But as long as we have the general idea, it should either be going down or going up. We already know it should be going down. So let's just confirm that idea. I'm going to put, it, I'm going to put in um, 1. I'm going to put in 1. So I'm going to go 1 minus 4 over 3 minus 2 times 1. So 1 minus 4 is negative 3. 3 minus 2 is 1. So that's negative 3. So that means that as x approaches 3 halves from the left, y is going to be approaching. Well, if it goes through negative 3 here, then that means it's got to be going down. And so that means we're going to have y approaching negative infinity. So now let's go to x approaching 3 halves from the right. And so approaching 3 halves from the right, which means we're going to be going this way. Of course, we expect it to be going up to positive infinity because of our knowledge of rational functions. But let's just show it. So I'm going to show a number just to the right of 3 halves. And just to simplify, I'm going to go ahead and use 2. It doesn't really matter. Um, if I had a calculator, I'd choose a bigger number. I'd choose, you know, 1,000 or something. but Or not 1,000, sorry. Something closer, like uh, instead of 1.5, I might put one point. 501 or something. So it's just barely to the right. But you know what? I don't want to mess with that since I don't have my calculator. So here we go. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. 3 minus 4 is negative 1, which gives me 2. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means that as I'm coming this direction, as I'm getting closer and closer to 3 halves, coming from the right side, that's the plus, coming from the right side, that I was down here. Now, I'm going to actually be getting up to 2, and so that means I've got to be going up. And so I'm going to write that as y is approaching positive infinity. So now we've done the end behavior. Next, we want to look at the intercepts. So I'm going to cordon this off. 
and we're going to look at the intercepts. So first, let's do the x-intercept. The x-intercept comes when y equals 0. So I'm going to say 0 equals x minus 4 over 3 minus 2x. Uh, I'm going to multiply both sides by 3 minus 2x, which will cancel this one out. Anything times 0 is 0. So 0 equals x minus 4. Add 4 to both sides, and 4 equals x. And so that's my x-intercept. So I'm going to go to 1, 2, 3, 4. And I'm going to put my x-intercept down. All right, now I will do the y-intercept. So this is step number 3, intercepts. All right, so y-intercept is when x equals... 0, so I'm going to put 0 minus 4 over 3 minus 2 times 0. 0 minus 4 is negative 4. 3 minus 2, uh, sorry, that would be uh, 3 minus 0, which is 3, so negative 4 thirds. And so the y-intercept is negative 4 thirds, which is 1 and 1 third, for those that don't like fractions. So there we go. I got 1 and a third, and that's close enough. Uh, number 4, I'm going to do a sine diagram. At this point, you may say, why in the world are you going to do something else? Well, to be honest, it's, it's more just because I want you to practice sign diagrams. Because <laughs> we've done it a little bit, but I want you to practice a little bit more. You can do these out of order if you want. You can do the intercepts and then sign diagram and then the end behavior if you want. But, you know, I'm just kind of putting the harder stuff at the beginning so that you can see it before we kind of really get into the problem. So I need my x-intercepts and my asymptote. Um, so my asymptote was at uh, 3 halves, and then I only had one x-intercept, which was at 4. So from here, I need to plug in numbers. Now, I've actually already done a lot of this. Uh, I plugged in x equals 0 here and got a negative number, so that would be over here. Um, I plugged in uh, x equals 2 right here. And I got a positive number, so that's somewhere in between here. And then, of course, after the 4 to the left of the 4, I could just plug something in. 10 minus 4 is a positive. Uh, 3 minus 2 times 10, that would be minus 20. 3 minus 20 would be a negative. Positive divided by negative is negative. And so it follows the convention we would expect, minus plus minus. There aren't any double roots or anything interesting like that. So now I can just kind of touch it up, fill in the gaps. This is step 5 which is just to finish it off. And here we go. I'm just touching it up, finishing it up. There we go. So there's my graph. Now this gives us a little bit better idea of how it curves, what it looks like, et cetera, et cetera. And so there you go. That's a rational function.